Hi guys, my name is Nadia, and you may know me from this video, which to my surprise kind of blew up. In that video, I went over how I increased my LSAT score by 30 points from a 136 to a 166. And also in that video, I told you that I applied to 17 out of the top 20 law schools and that I would be posting a video with all of my admissions decisions and me reacting to them once I decided where I wanted to go to school. That video never happened because I didn't get into law school. I was waitlisted and rejected at all 17 schools that I applied to and 2020 was notoriously the most difficult law school admission cycle of all time due to the pandemic and unfortunately I really felt that difficulty firsthand. However, I was a senior in college, about to graduate, and knew that I had to push forward. And so I put law school to the side for a little bit, and I ended up taking an administrative position at Cravath. I was incredibly lucky to start my career at that firm, and I was there for almost two years before kind of pivoting and returning to my roots in teaching to create a pro bono tutoring service for underprivileged students. And during that time, I also impulsively applied to three New York City law schools on the last day that applications were open. Again, I was waitlisted at all three schools and subsequently rejected. Even though I was an LSAT Logic Games tutor for years, I always really hated the reading comp section of the exam and I hated studying for it and I just didn't want to retake the LSAT because I just hated that section so much. However, after getting that last rejection off of that last waitlist last summer, I knew that I had to restudy for the LSAT and take it again. So. I studied for about a month and a half before scoring a 172 on the September 2023 exam, which was super exciting because it was two points over my goal score. And I'm also happy to tell you that this video has a much happier ending than that last video did because with that new LSAT score, I applied to schools last fall and I'm excited to say that I've been accepted to multiple top 14 law schools and I will be attending one of them this fall. I know that I promised in my last video that I would make that admissions decision reaction video and I promise this time it's actually coming your way soon. But in this video, I really wanted to focus on how I raised my LSAT score from a 166 to a 172 in about a month and a half. And I'm also excited to say that there is going to be a little giveaway at the end of this video. So definitely stick around until the end so you can see how to enter that. Like I said in my first video, the LSAT is a super, super learnable test. And if you're dedicated, diligent and driven, you can really increase your score even on the high end of this exam. And I really, really hope that this video helps show you how. After I got my last rejection off of the waitlist last year, I took a diagnostic practice test on July 16th. And I was a little bit shocked that I got the exact same score that I got on my October 2020 exam which was a 166. So I knew that I had to get the ball rolling and really start studying. And I also signed up for the September 2023 LSAT at that time. I work Monday through Friday from nine to 6.30 every day. And even though I'm a night person, I knew that I would just be too tired to study by the time that I got home. And so I kind of turned myself into a morning person. So in short, my study schedule kind of looked like this. So on Monday and Friday, I would do three hours in the morning before work. And on Tuesday and Thursday, I would do two hours in the morning before work. Wednesday, I would give myself the day off. And Saturday and Sunday, I would spend about six to eight hours each day doing practice tests and blind reviewing. So that's kind of like the skeleton of my study schedule, at least for the first few weeks. And I'm someone that really adheres to routine and scheduling, and so I really just made sure to hold myself to that. However, one thing that I did differently this time that I didn't do last time was I gave myself a little bit of grace. Um, I had a particularly rough summer, all in all, and there were some really hard days. And during those days, I wasn't really retaining what I was trying to study, and I listened to myself, and if I was just having a bad day, I wouldn't study. I would just take the day off, focus on myself and my mental health, 
And I think that that played a huge role in how I was able to increase my scores so quickly and not just immediately burn out. The LSAT has really difficult material and if you try to just push through and push through every single day, you are definitely going to burn out and you're not going to retain what you're learning. And also on Wednesdays, my scheduled day off, I made sure to like not go on LSAT Reddit or not listen to LSAT podcast. I just tried to give myself a day away from the studying that was kind of consuming the rest of my life. So yeah, with the study schedule out of the way, let's go over how I spent my time. During my first few weeks into restudying, I split my weekday morning study time between Khan Academy, Seven Sage, and Law Hub. Khan Academy is a free study resource made in collaboration with the Law School Admissions Council, and Seven Sage is a paid self-study program that has question drills and video explanations for every answer choice on the LSAT. And then Law Hub is a paid resource from the Law School Admissions Council that gives you access to over 90 real administered LSAT practice tests. It is $115 a year, but if there's any paid resource that you purchase during your study time, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you buy Law Hub because it's where you're able to take practice tests and gain access to those tests. So I spent the first hour of all of my weekday study sessions going through Khan Academy and learning about their reading comprehension section and kind of getting myself acclimated back into studying and what the questions are asking me. Um, and then I would spend the next hour or two either going through Seven Sage reading comprehension drills or doing Law Hub's uh, reading comprehension sections before going in and then blind reviewing them. After getting that 166 on July 16th, I then took my second practice test on July 22nd and I scored a 167 and I blind reviewed a 172. So I was super happy to have a little bit of a score increase, but of course I knew I had to continue studying. And so I kept moving along with Law Hub, Seven Sage, and Khan Academy. And I would read a ton of articles, watch a lot of videos. I would go through other people's study guides. I tried at least a dozen different methods and I listened to podcasts, I read books, I read through Reddit. I just did everything that I could think of to try to increase my score. In case you were wondering, some of the reading comprehension strategies that I tried out that did not work for me personally included reading the first and last sentence of every paragraph only. I also used three different colored highlighters to highlight the author's main point, other viewpoints, and then the author's opinion. And I also would read a paragraph, stop, and then write down the main point of that paragraph before moving on. And the last thing that I can think of is I would read a paragraph, close my eyes, and then try to recite what the paragraph was talking about. And yeah, none of that worked for me. I tried everything and nothing was really working for me. So over the span of the next month, I also took three more practice tests. So on August 5th, I scored a 166 and blind reviewed a 169. On August 12th, I scored a 166 and blind reviewed a 166. And then on August 19th, do you wanna guess what I scored? because it was a 166 and I blind reviewed a 165. So on paper, I wasn't necessarily getting worse, but I definitely wasn't getting better and my blind review scores kept going down. And so I decided that I needed to make some changes. I also decided that I needed to sign up for the October exam in addition to the September exam that I was already signed up for. And I also decided that I really needed to get a tutor. Before I get any further into this video, I just wanted to say that I know that private tutoring is a huge privilege and that it is not accessible to everyone. I was an LSAT Logic Games tutor for years and I focused most of my business on pro bono tutoring for low income and first generation law students. 
So I definitely know the difficulties that come with affording tutoring and I know that I was able to do this from a place of privilege and that it is not accessible to everyone. However, I was really plateaued in my studies and I really thought that a tutor would help me and luckily I was correct. So as a former LSAT tutor, I knew exactly what I was looking for in a tutor. I wanted someone who had a demonstrated history of students with score increases on the higher end, because generally once you get past a certain level of LSAT scoring, you are only missing the hardest questions on the exam. And so it was really important for me to find someone who could focus on those very, very difficult questions and help me increase my high score. I also wanted someone who would assign me weekly homework because I know that homework keeps me very accountable and I knew that I wouldn't slip up. I also wanted someone who would be available via text if I had any serious and like kind of emergency questions that I needed answered. And then last, I wanted someone who I liked, someone who I got along with because studying for the LSAT is a very serious and stressful endeavor. Um, and any kind of like pocket of joy that I can work into it, I definitely wanted to. And so I knew what I wanted when I was looking for a tutor. And once I decided that I needed one, I went on Reddit and I ended up finding Sam from Houston LSAT. So Sam and I chatted for a while and he offered me a free introduction session with him. And during that session, he really listened to what I was looking for and what I really needed. Um, and after our lesson, he put together a study schedule for me. He assigned me homework and he gave me a kind of like Excel tracking sheet so that I can keep track of how I was doing and how I was scoring. And during that session, we also agreed that I would be focusing more on taking the October LSAT and that I wouldn't really push myself to be taking the September LSAT. So I would still take the September LSAT, but it would just kind of be like a trial run ahead of the October one. So after our trial session, uh, Sam and I had our first real session the next day, and he really focused on tips that he thought would work well for me. So instead of focusing on how to highlight or how to read, he kind of got a feel for my personality and gave me tips on how I personally should think. He told me to think about why the author is asking these questions, which I think was a really helpful exercise for me. And he also really quickly figured out certain biases that I didn't know that I had with language. So for instance, if a uh, answer choice said systemic in it, my brain would negatively think of that word and that would draw me away from that answer. Within that first session, he was able to kind of realize these little errors that I was making internally and really, really quickly adjust them. He also had me explain my reasoning for my incorrect answer choices on the homework that I did the night before. I also found that explaining my reasoning and my choices for why I ended up choosing the wrong answer was a really, really helpful task for me because I was able to verbalize my thought process and really see what I was doing wrong. I learned so much during that first session and from there he assigned me with PDF homework that I could do where I can really focus on implementing those tips and making sure that I'm not making the same mistakes that we went over during our lesson. And he also assigned me a practice test to do. So I did that and I scored a 169 and I blind reviewed a 176. So just from like having that one lesson and having my mistakes adjusted, it just immediately gave me a score increase, which was amazing. So from that point on, I used my weekday study time to do Sam's homework and then blind review that homework. Rather than focusing on random seven sage drills or random sections on Law Hub. After I finished my timed homework, I would usually write little notes next to questions that I had some trouble with. And then after that, I would blind review that homework by writing down my thought process for choosing certain answer choices or changing my answer choices before sending the PDFs back to Sam. And I would also review those notes before every session just to make sure that they were fresh in my brain. So this type of review I found worked 
insanely, insanely well for me. When I was blind reviewing before, I would just blind review and keep all of my thoughts in my head. Um, and so that wasn't really triggering any like muscle memory in a way because I wasn't writing it down. So during our next lesson, Sam really molded his explanations and examples to my type of humor um, and my personality type, which just made the studying experience a lot more fun. I don't know, I just think that when you're having fun while you're studying, it doesn't seem like it's a chore or something that you need to do. But I think the one thing, the one tip that I got that really just changed the way that I thought about everything was he told me to think about the authors of the passages on the reading comprehension section as if they were like a mutual friend that I was meeting for the first time at a party. He said, you're surrounded by four people because there's four reading comp passages in a section. And the better you get to know those people, the better that you will do on the LSAT, basically. That was literally hands down the best LSAT advice I've ever been given because it was an example that I understood and it really just changed the way that I thought so that advice helped me a lot, and when I took my next practice test, I got a 170, which was really exciting because it showed me that the 169 was not a fluke, and it also proved that I was on an upwards trajectory and I was away from that 166 plateau. So I had one last tutoring session before I ended up taking the September LSAT and I didn't take any practice tests or do any homework in the week leading up to my exam because as I said in my last video, I think it's really important to give your brain a little bit of a rest before you put yourself through such a strenuous and long exam like the LSAT. And so during that week before the exam, I really just tried to focus on like self-care and doing fun things. Um, the night before my LSAT, two of my best friends came over and we had like a legally blonde watch party with like Thai takeout and it just really put me in a good mood for test day. So I felt really good going into the September LSAT. I knew that the October exam was only a month away and that if I didn't do well in September, I could just retake in October. However, let me tell you about the horror story that was my September exam. Someone on the roof behind my building started jackhammering for at least like 10, 15 minutes. My proctor told me that he couldn't see me and so we had to pause the exam. That pause ended up being three hours long. I couldn't move, I couldn't exit the frame, otherwise my test would be disqualified. The AC in my apartment broke and it started getting super, super hot. After that, the entire sky went black and a thunderstorm started. At two points during my exam, the doorbell rang. There was like this spider in my bathroom that I let live there, because why not? He decided that on my LSAT day was gonna be the day that he left the bathroom for the first time, walked into my room and then climbed up like behind my computer. So he was in full fledged view and he was not like a itsy bitsy spider. He was a big boy. Anyway, I ended up finishing. It was like five or six hours because of that long break. And yeah, I thought about canceling my score and I ended up not doing it because I thought I could just take October if I didn't like my score. And yeah, it was the worst experience of my life. So after the September exam, I continued on with tutoring and I took another practice test after having two more lessons with Sam. And I scored a 172 and I blind reviewed a 180. So. I think I only got one question wrong for that 180, but that was like the best day of my life. It felt amazing to be able to achieve something like that and to see again that I was just on an upwards trajectory in terms of studying. Late September came around and score release day came. And when I checked my score, I got a 172 on the September LSAT. I was like absolutely shocked even with all of those insane distractions and just things that were happening on test day, I scored two points above my goal score. 
And so from there, I stopped studying and I went straight into working on my applications for law school. So yeah, that is the story of how I increased my LSAT score by six points in just a month and a half. And I know that I was very lucky to have been able to do all of my studying on such a short timeline, but also know that I was incredibly lucky and very, very privileged to have been able to have had the resources that I did. And it's something that I don't take for granted, and it is something that Sam also does not take for granted. So with that being said, I am super, super excited and very happy to announce that I am partnering up with Sam from Houston LSAT and we will be giving away five hours of free private tutoring with him to a lucky winner. I was able to increase my LSAT score within three sessions with Sam, and we both really wanted to be able to give someone else that experience for free. So I'm so, so, so excited to announce this, and if you want to enter, there are just two very simple rules that you need to follow. The first one is that you need to follow Sam on Instagram, and I will link his Instagram profile in the bio below. And then the second rule is that you have to like and comment comment on his giveaway post that is going to be live by the time you're watching this video. All submissions need to be in by March 23rd and a winner will be announced within 48 hours of the contest closing. And with all that being said, please go ahead and follow Sam and like and comment on that giveaway picture. But also if you are looking for a tutor, I highly, highly recommend Sam. He is incredible and really just got me over the finish line and helped me achieve goals that I didn't think would be possible for me to achieve. So definitely go ahead and book your free consultation session with him. And yeah, I'm just really grateful that I have platforms like this to be able to talk to you guys, give study tips, and hopefully help even just a little bit on your road to law school. Um, educational equity is one of the most important things to me. It's something that I hold very, very dearly and close to my heart. And that is why I did pro bono tutoring for so long, but yeah, I just really hope that this video helps some of you. I hope that you guys go and enter the giveaway with Sam and I, and I will see you guys in the next video.